our nation up before God as we are right on the brink of World War III. Serious time in the history of our nation. Well, we're going to go today to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, and we're going to be looking at the story of David and Goliath. And some years ago, I heard uh, Pastor Lawrence Mendez preach a tremendous message upon Goliath and David, and his his text and his his uh, sermon title was "How to Get Ahead." Now think about that one: How to get ahead. <laughs> now that's not my title today. But we're going to be looking at the same God, the same miracle that's very familiar, but I hope God will freshly uh, give you some fresh encouragement today from this. Literally, I'm going to be talking today from this scripture to us. How to slay your giant. How to slay your giant. Because there's more than one David and there's more than one giant. There's giants in our life. Every day we face the giants in our life. Now you may look and say, well, you look back and God gave a tremendous victory that's almost, uh, almost incredible and unbelievable. But God can do the same victory in your life as he did for David. God's got a will for every person. And he's the one that fights your battles. He's the one that's on your side. He's the one that called you to redemption. He's the one that saved and sanctified you. He's the one that empowers you by the Holy Spirit of God to do anything he calls you to do. And the giants in your life are going to come fighting. We see them every day. We fight them every day, but we know who is on our side in the battle? Because the battle is not yours. The battle is God's. And God has never lost power. Okay, he's never lost sight of our need every single moment of every single day. So now last week, uh, we were in uh, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, and we saw the story that how how the prophet went uh, went to uh, the house of Jesse to the sacrifice and uh, Jesse's eight sons were there except uh, except David seven of them were there and how that uh, he, he was supposed to anoint David as king and uh, God told uh, the prophet you just go uh, and, and to this sacrifice and bring a bring a sacrifice to the Lord and tell Jesse, I've come to sacrifice, I'm coming in peace. But whoever I tell you to anoint, that's who I want you to anoint, he told Samuel. So Samuel went through all of the big, big uh, sons of Jesse, all seven of them. Their statures were big and they looked like they would be king material but everyone was rejected. And when they, he ran out of kids at the sacrifice, he said, is any more of your kids here? And he said, just the little one that keeps the sheep. And his name is David. And he called for David. And we find in verse 13 of chapter 16, that Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, that's David, in the midst of the brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So he was anointed by Samuel, and you know, you and I are anointed by the same God, all right? Because he, he's the one that calls us. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to take the scripture today, and I'm going to insert us of how we slay our giants, because that's, that's important. Your giant may not be Goliath. It may be of some other person. But I want you to understand something. There's more than one David. 
Everyone that's saved that's got the plan of God is a David called. God's not no respecter of person. And there's sure more than one, one giant other than Goliath because you have giants in your life and giants you have to defend and face. So how do I slay my giant when it comes? And here's some great stuff. And I would suggest, number one, that you be anointed by the Spirit of God in the proper relationship with God. That's number one. Because we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the promise of God that I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So when your giant comes against you, remember, as God was with David and slaying his giant, God is with you in slaying whatever your giant is. But you need to be, first of all, anointed under the anointing of God and have God on your side totally, all right? You, but you say, well, why do you say that? Isn't God always on my side? Not when we're backsliding, he isn't. Because God permits you to do things and his blessings can be removed if we, if we, if we move away from God's anointing and ignore God and put the world or self or others first before his will in our life. So number one is have the anointing and the blessings of God Upon you. Now let's get into the story, and I would just like to stop in verse in chapter 17 we're going to be looking at, but it describes the battle between Israel and the Philistines, and Goliath has been coming uh, before the armies and been fighting down in the valley, and every day Goliath would come up and say, "Now send a man that can that can, can kill me, and if you kill me, we will." We will be on your side, and if I slay him, he Israel will be on my side. They never, they never could find a man that could beat this giant. And by the way, you can't beat your giant by yourself, and you can't go to somebody else to slay your giant. You have to go to God. And it describes uh, this giant. In verse 4, that out came a champion out of the camp of Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. It's like nine foot, nine foot high. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shackles of brass, and he had, a, he had a greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spearhead weighed 600 shackles of iron and one bearing a shield went before him and he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said, why are you come out to set your battle to array? Am not I a Philistine? And then he, he challenges them to send a man. And guess what? Israel trembled in their shoes. And so it was a stalemate. And every day this monster would come out and he would challenge God's people. I wanted to tell you that today God's people's being challenged as well. And so is the United States of America. Okay? And that's another story, but keep tuned into the news and you'll see the alignment between China and Russia and uh, North Korea and those countries that want to destroy Israel and they want to kill death to the USA. All right? So that we are in a battle now. Our nation has a giant that we must change this election to even have a chance to start 
getting out of war, all right? But that's another subject for another time. But I want us to go now over in chapter 17 to, to uh, uh, verse 22. And so now uh, three of Jesse's eldest sons were in the battle uh, against, uh, against the Philistines and David was home keeping the sheep, and, and Jesse told David, take these foods and victuals and stuff over and go to the army and find your brothers and take them these things, all right? So that's where we pick up the story now. David's on his way to the army to deliver food to his brothers. And David left his carry, verse 22, and David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the chariot and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gad, Goliath by name, out of the armies of Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard him. So he made his challenge to Israel in the presence of little David, who was delivering food to his brothers. In verse 24, And all the men of Israel, when they saw him, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the, man of, and the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. So they're talking about the rewards for killing Goliath the giant. And no one was afraid, to, everyone was afraid to face the giant. In verse 26, David spake to the men, uh, that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this circumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Now, there is a, this, that David's faith and his thoughts and his heart was upon the power of God. And who is this loud mouth? nine-foot giant in armor. See the confidence? You see where his heart and his mind is? It was fixed upon God. Who is this that defies the army of the living God? And I'm just here to say that the armies of this world can try to fight against the armies of God and the Christians and we that are here, but God's still got a hand in the Third World War in this country. God still got a plan. God still got the power. God still got the will. So we just follow what God does. Let's sit back with our faith and with our confidence in God. And let me say this. And watch what God can do. Just watch. Watch what God can do. Verse 27, the people answered after him, after this matter, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killed him. So there's going to be great rewards, and Israel's reproach would be gone. Now look at this conversation. Now he's there with his, with his, uh, with his brothers. And in verse 28, and Eliab his eldest brother heard when he spake unto the men, that's the giant and also David, and Elab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why comest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art not come, thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. So here he was accused and he was judged by his older brother. 
Who are you, a little tight kid coming down here and talking like that? You're just a kid. All right? So understand the point I want to make here is sometimes your own family is not going to want to see you do what God wants you to do. I was the first in my family to step out and get married. My mother was petrified and shocked, and she believed that if I got married and had my own life, I'd quit singing and going with the family and so on, and she had her fears. But let me tell you something, it takes courage. The Bible says for a man to leave his, his father and his mother and cleave to his wife, but it doesn't say to annihilate and forget all about your parents. It doesn't say that. Honor your mother and your father always. And I think I didn't turn out too bad. Right? It, I'm not saying I turned out the best, but I can't I'll say I didn't turn out too bad. And by the way, my mother was really proud of me. And there's some great things how she watched God take her fear of losing me. And she wasn't too nice to Judy when we first got married. She had to get to know her. See, people have, sometimes your own family have, have fears and judge. And that, that's what happened with, with, with his oldest brother. Why are you here? You can't do nothing. Why are you talking like this? Why are you talking like, how can they, this, this, who is this Philistine that defies the army of the living God? Wow, what confidence. Didn't sound like no little kid to me. But I just want to stop to say, he was. He was. It, I had, some time ago, I had a, a big family Bible, and I was going through it and saw him picture. And I saw him standing on Goliath and had Goliath's head. And all of a sudden, he looked like a must. He looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger. That wasn't David, okay? That did not represent that at all because the Bible says that he was ruddy. We'll see that in just a few moments, okay? But let's look. I just want you to know that you can... You can have, you can have ad adversity with family or friends or relatives or whatever. In verse 28, and Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the man, and his anger was kindled against David. He said, Why comest thou here? I know your haughtiness. Uh, I know your heart. You, you're here under false pretense. You just want to see the battle. And here's what David said. David said, what have I now done? So he was used to this. Amen. What have I done now? That means prior they had been railing on little David for any good thing that he had done. All right. And I'll stop for a second to tell you when I was pastoring my first church and had three children, and God told Judy she couldn't have any more children. And all of a sudden, nine years after Pam, who's standing here, came a little David. When we were thinking about naming him, Judy had taught a little class, and she said, I don't know, I can't have no more kids, but if I ever had another little boy, I would name him David. And she was reminded of that when we were trying to name him. So little David sitting in the back with you today in, in the ministry, all right? But here's what he said. David said, what have I now done? Listen to this. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Can't you see what's happening? And you're, you're, you're railing on me? Listen. You have to see a cause. There's a cause. Why should I slay the giants that's trying to, to, to hold me down? You have to. I'll tell you why. Because 
souls are perishing and going to hell while your giants are trying to stop you in your tracks. You have to slay your giant. You have to keep the anointing of God upon you. You have to rebuttal discouragement and others that will try to stop you and hold you down and keep you low. You see, it's just, there's jealousy in this world. Quite honest, if you got a good dream, don't tell anybody. They'll try to stop it. The Bible said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. And that's the reason, because once you blabber it all out, you're going to have all kind of opposition and discouragement about what God's plan is for your life. Because, listen, you're going to have giants. And let me tell you why. If you were just with the world, there wouldn't be any extraordinary giant. Because the world would accept you. They would love you. They would make you happy with what they are. But when you stand up for God and you're doing, you're doing what's right, all hell is going to come against you. The giants are on their way out to march against you. And you have to keep God in the center of your life and keep him there at all costs. Because you have to say, there is a cause I have to stand before God one day. I have to give an account for every word, for every deed, for every failure. I don't want to stand before God and my life be counted waste. Well, you lived it for yourself. You lived it for the flesh. You lived it for pleasure. You lived it for things. No. I lived it for God. You live it for God. Get the courage in your heart. Get your eyes fixed on him. Get your heart ready. Because if there's no giant in your life, it's because you've avoided being in where, where the giant was. David ran to the army. He ran to the cause. And God delivered him. God help us. Is there not a cause? Let's look down at verse 31 through 36. What do I see here? And I want to encourage you with this. Verses 31 through 36 is talking about faith and belief. Faith and belief, and it's based upon experience. And there's another term that I can give you uh, to, to match, would be confidence and trust. Your faith and your belief will give you confidence and trust. If you don't have no confidence, you're not going to have not much, much, uh, much faith. If you don't have trust, you're not going to have belief. So you have to have faith and belief, which gives you confidence and trust. Because you can't trust men. You can only trust God. He's the only one. Several years ago, we used to go out to Vito's Pizza for afterglows and walked up to the counter to pay my bill, and there was a sign on, on the counter of Vito's that said, In God we trust, all others pay cash. <laughs> okay? You can't trust anything but God. And that's, and that's without saying. Verse 31, let's look at it. When these words were heard, which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. So what David said was reported to Saul, and Saul sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. 
And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and, and he a man of war and youth. And so there it is. Saul was looking on the outward appearance just like his brothers. You're just a kid. Go back home and tend the sheep until you grow up. And David said to Saul, Thy servant kept this father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by the beard and smote him and slew him. The lion and the bear. So you understand, God had already been with David. God had already given him victory when he was even attending the sheep. And God's given you victories. God's slain some giants of yours in the past because there's not just one giant. There's multitudes of giants that come against you, okay? So David said, and I slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. There's the cause again, defying the armies of the living God. And David, moreover, uh, and David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. So he convinced. Now look what Saul tried to do, tried to weight him down with armor that was unproven. And Saul armed David with armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail, and David girded the sword upon his armor, and he assuaged to go, for he had not proved it. In other words, he didn't want to go with that on him. It didn't fit. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them, and David put them off him. And let me tell you, people try to tell you what your armor is and what your defensive weapon is, but the only thing that's listed under the whole uh, full armor of God to give you a, a, a sword to fight with, the only offensive weapon you have is the Bible. The Word of God. You've got God's Word. God's Word is sharp. It's powerful. It's more sharper than any two-edged sword. And it cuts right down to the intents of your heart and the thoughts of your mind. And the Word of God will deliver you. So David put them on. He took the staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in the, in the scrip, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near the Philistine. Now, what I said, confidence. I, I can't go with his armor, but I got a slingshot. What did you do with that slingshot? Well, it turned out pretty good for me. What kind of weapon do I need, God? Five small, smooth stones from the brook. The Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disclaimed him, disdained him, for he was a youth and ruddy and of fair countenance. The Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me 
with staffs, and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thee thy flesh, to give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord God, the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. I don't care if it's a small giant or a big one. My daughter Rhonda was picked on in school. She came home crying and she asked her mom, this bully, what can I do? And Judy told Rhonda, the next time that bully comes, you look her straight in the eye and say, I'm a Christian and God's going to get you. That fixed the problem. That advice lay a giant. Because to her, that bully in the school was a giant in her life. Small giants or big giants, they all fall down the same way. They're all fighting against the power of Almighty God. So I come to you in the name of the Lord God of hosts, the God of the army of Israel's whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hands, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give it give the carcass of the uh, I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. You see, that kind of a spunky attitude kind of puts God pretty much on your, on your favor. And all, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with the sword and spear. Get this. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted, hasted, that means he hurried, and he ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took, uh, took thence a stone and sling it and smote the Philistine in the forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. You see, we read about all that armor. Goliath only had one spot that was vulnerable. Right between the eyes. So when he ran, and by the way, someone said, well, why did David, if he had so much faith, why did he go and, buy, and, and pick up five small stones? He only used one. That's because he knew Goliath had four brothers. He only needed one. But as he began whirl is slain. What is he thinking? A stone would have bounced off of that armor anywhere it hit him, except the one place it could find. So God, God guided the stone between his eyes. 
David came and took his head off. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. That's how to get a head right there. And when a Philistine saw their champion was dead, they fled. My time is up, and that is a great account of a true story. But what I want you to see is how to slay your giant. You have the anointing of God. You have the cause because it has to be. Somebody has to do it for God. Somebody has to speak. Somebody has to pray. Somebody has to not let the giant stop you from being what God would have you to be. You need to have the faith and the belief. You need to have the confidence and the trust. And believe that scripture, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Because that is Philippians 4.13. God's already said that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And that we can do anything that God calls us to do. In conclusion, there's no respect of persons with God. What God did for David, he'll do for you. He'll give you the victory. He's already promised us the victory of whatever. But there is a word of caution. There is more than just one David and one Goliath. And there is more than just one Jonah and the whale. Jonah ran, and God changed that around. But there's more than one Jonah because Christians can be a Jonah. You can run away from God, and you can ignore God. But remember, what are you going to do? What are you going to do with your giant that's coming? You may not even see it or know it or be aware, but there's a giant of destruction upon you if you run from God, if you shot him out of your life. And I want to tell you, I think Jonah learned his lesson. The next time God told him to do something rather than running the other way, do you know what I believe was synchronized in the mind of Jonah? Here comes that whale. Amen? There's more than one Jonah, and there's more than one whale. Because you don't do what God wants, you better look for the whale. And by the way, they have huge tails. I just saw on TV where one sunk a ship. Amen? So how do you slay your giant? By these principles. This story will always be here for you to go back and look and see what God did for David. And you can know that God will do the same for you. Heavenly Father, bless the word to our lives today. Bless our morning service in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.